Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast, where six mates unpack three topics over a new drink each week. Fuck it, just go with that, we'll fix it if it's... That was a great opener. Welcome to Simple Minds Podcast. I'm Justin, hosting today, back from Europe. You sure you're Justin, mate? Huh? Yeah. Sure that's Justin? We're just... You- Full on radio voice. So, that sounds a too up tempo for you. Too up tempo. I'm trying Slow. to. Up, I'm trying to up the game. You know. Um, so yeah, I've been away for a few weeks. We have got a full house today. I will do the rounds and intro everyone. To my left, I have <laughs> Magic Matt. Present. Present. He's accepted that name really well. Conrad Kanye Francis. <laughs> I haven't accepted that name. Really well. <laughs> you should. Good mate. How you doing? Michael Duncan. Hey, nice to see you again. <laughs> where's, your, where's your nickname, Mike? Yeah, I don't have one. He's Mike. The Mike, Mike, the Mike. Just, Mike. Just, Mike the Justin wizard. was here last week. Yeah, I don't know. You this? were. Yeah, was I? We're yeah. not welcoming you back. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was here last week. I have no idea where this week's gone. Last two weeks since I've been back from Europe have been an absolute blur. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> next week. Nice uh, back again from being Moff, back. Moff the prof, Jacob. <laughs> Jacob Moffat. Thanks, guys. And I'm not sure what. Hato. Travis, <laughs> Travis Hato. He's got uh, a joke. Let me have the joke, but get it out of his guts. He's laughing his gets up here. He's no, no, he's, he's got a timing for it. Is he he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a moment. So today I have brought some Spanish beer because um, I spent a lot of my time in the last few weeks in Spain. Did you bring I this with you? I bring it through. Sorry? You bring it through customs? No, I didn't bring it through customs. <laughs> I went down the, down the road to buy it. This was the only Spanish beer they had. I'm like, do you have any Spanish beer? This is the only one. So we have, um, it's called Amber um, Caesar Augusta. Um, Should be Italian then. Yeah. But um, this is uh, Spanish. I probably just sold it to you. Uh, over the oh, yeah, so, yeah. I got Spanish beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, uh, wouldn't, he wouldn't know the difference. Did you I, have this in Spain? I, I actually didn't have this in Spain. This was the only one they had. I, I Googled it to try and get um, more info on it, but the website's all in Spanish and they, have, <laughs> they don't have English converter. So I doesn't, can't Google does, doesn't it? So yeah. It does, but... If you go and tell them you can get, get their, group, their um, website translated, you might be able to get some free beer. It's Maybe. a cute, cute little bottle. So it's a win-win. Oh, a chubby little bottle. It is a little chubby little bottle. Too big for people with small hands. While I'm... Thank you. Cheers. 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 Salute. Salute. You two gentlemen. Isn't that Russian? Salute. Oh, that's a bit warm. Yeah, it's a little bit warm. It's a shame. Not oh, we're going to crucify JB for the next <laughs> 10 fucking episodes. I just did. <laughs> it's not that bad. I'd it's like not... just to pre-warn everybody. Conrad's uh, in a foul mood today, so... <laughs> He uh, oh. just got his just got his car clamp, uh, unclamped. He uh, was parking <laughs> at a meeting, went to get some chicken and rice, <laughs> and uh, came out with a with a clamp on his on his wheel. So, uh, if he says anything hostile or more hostile than normal, <laughs> than normal, uh, we know why. So, in other words, it'd be a normal episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was his joke, Michael Duncan. Oh no, <laughs> that wasn't a joke, Conrad. It's, He's just contextualising it for everyone out there when when it comes. He's he's, he's being prepared. Where's the head gone of Travis anyway? So, Didn't he put it on the wall? No, it's, on it's the in wall, here. Mate. So on that as well, congrats to uh, the Perry Lakes Hawks, Woo-hoo. Conrad and, and Hado, for winning the um, championship last weekend, um, turning it around. So, yeah, that was really awesome to, to watch and be a part of. So You put into practice everything from that poem, all the pertinacity. Although it was it was last week's I remember last week's episode now actually thanks yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was all of Food the Simple nasty. Minds uh, podcast that enabled you guys to win um, on that you know for everyone out there please um, I hope you're following us on Facebook and Instagram um, please comment on the post and hit us up with any stories or anything you're taking out of the show um, we'd really appreciate to know if you're implementing or or you've learnt anything that um, you've gotten out of this it, it's um, Really helpful for us to also tailor how we can get some great value to you guys. So please hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn as well. We recently just got onto LinkedIn. We're live on LinkedIn. And (laughs) yeah, let us know and we'll also get back to you. 
And also give us five stars on uh, <laughs> iTunes. Thank and you. And if there's any Thank volume, you. any any people you want their volumes turned up or down, just let us know who they yeah, are. Yeah, anyone who want, uh, you want muted. Jacob up, Conrad well, down. A few, <laughs> a few people have commented saying that uh, they can't hear the others when you're involved. Well, that's because I'm speaking. <laughs> Over everybody. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> That's why you, you're wired into four tracks. <laughs> it's Conrad in chorus. Might Sorry. have to stick a clamp on your microphone. Two. Two. That was funny. That was my joke. That's not my joke. Unbelievable. There's going to be a few more today, I think. So on that, let's head straight into um, today's content. Today we have um, Matt and, and Jacob bringing something to the to the table. Um, we're going to start with uh, Matt, which was really cool. So look, I'll hand it over to you. And um, It's really cool. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to bringing topics to the table, mate. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, I forgot you actually existed <laughs> in the content providing area until I saw that post come through. Well, I, I hope the audience has enjoyed hearing you live. Distributed digitally, Conrad. Are we live? <laughs> well, I get to hear you oh. live. <laughs> Not today. It is unedited, by the way. <laughs> appreciate the uh, raw, appre- raw, and unedited. appreciate the second uh, introduction for me. Uh, so, moving on, I wanted to discuss today a topic, or actually, really, a, a TED talk. Um, it's a piece of content at a TEDx talk titled "How to Be the Hero of Your Life." By Chatri Sitio Tong, which I hope I've pronounced that right. Very interesting bloke. He's a very interesting bloke. So I've actually, a few of us were fortunate enough to witness him do a keynote live. And uh, this was in uh, Singapore a couple of months ago. And yeah, he's a pretty amazing dude. And I wanted to just show everyone uh, this keynote and just get a bit of a sense of what he's done in his life. So he's an entrepreneur and he's a martial artist from Thailand. He had quite a challenging childhood, and at one point, um, coming out of his childhood, he was able to live on four dollars a day uh, whilst on scholarship at Harvard. Which, at that time, I believe his mum also slept on his bed in his dorm at Harvard whilst he slept on the floor while he was studying. So he spent a decade after he after he passed, um, obviously finished his studies. He spent a decade on Wall Street, and then left to fulfil his purpose or his ikki, ikigai. So he serves as a board of directors on, sorry, serves on the board of directors of Project Sunshine. Why am I reading stuff out? It's much easier. It's much better when I don't do this. <laughs> are you trying to be Tom Bill and you, mate? Um, yeah, <laughs> apparently. Who are you trying to be? I'm, try- I'm struggling <laughs> to be me right now. <laughs> anyway, so Chatri, this guy is incredible, right? So that's that's his base story. But what he went on and did after he finished up on Wall Street, his family, his mum said, like, what are you doing? You've got it made. You're the managing director of a fund that's, I think, million controlling over worth. 500 million at that time, but he controlled funds that were upwards of several billion. What are you doing? And he went off and started a organisation called One Championship. So he's the founder, chairman, and CEO of this organisation. It's Asia's lar- largest sporting media property. So, um, just to put that into perspective, it's got a global broadcast of over a billion homes and in 118 countries, and that currently matches where the Formula One sits in terms of size and scale. Yeah. Until and this you is mentioned a six-year it, old organisation. Until you mentioned it, was it last year you heard him speak? This year. This year. Yep. Just recently. Hadn't yeah. heard of the guy. Hadn't no. even heard of the league. Yeah. Same. Same. Yep. No. So, and I, I was, I hadn't, I didn't know much about him, but then we saw him speak, and he was, he was an incredible speaker, oh, yeah, but. Also, just what he had, um, his concepts, the energy that he brought to the situation and just the stories that he talked through. But to build a business that quickly, um, in turn, he's obviously a billionaire now, and to build a business that fast was incredible. But I'll touch on a couple of things. We'll link up this TED Talk, and I recommend watching it to anyone um, that has the chance to go and spend about 15 minutes to watch this. But he, he talks or he tells a childhood story, and I'm going to attempt to do this justice and, and try and read it out. And if I don't, this bit... May or may not be cut out. And he's yeah, we'll just, refer back to the, yeah, back to the same TED talk. So here we go. But so once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess that the entire kingdom adored. She had two of the bravest warriors as her bodyguards. One day, the three of them took a walk on a beautiful day in the forest. Suddenly, it gets dark, and a massive, hungry, angry, red-eyed tiger with huge fangs appears. They freeze. They think their lives are over. Both warriors were secretly madly in love with the princess. The first warrior looked at the tiger and says to himself, 
I've been preparing all my life for this moment. But this tiger is so much bigger and scarier and more ferocious than I could ever have imagined. I'm scared out of my mind. He looks at the princess and thinks, but I love her. She's everything I've ever dreamed of. He turns to face the tiger. The tiger steps forward and in a split second he makes a decision and runs for his life. The second warrior, same thing, looks at the tiger and thinks, I've been preparing all my life for this. But this, t this tiger is so much bigger, scarier and way more ferocious than I could have ever imagined. He looks at the princess like the first warrior and he thinks to himself, but I love her. She is everything I've ever dreamed of. He turns to face the tiger and the tiger steps forward. And in a split second, he draws his sword and he fights. He gets bitten <coughs> and it hurts, but he fights and he fights and he fights. And by pure luck, he kills the tiger. They escape the forest and the princess nurses him back to health. And they end up falling madly in love, getting married and living happily ever after. Chattery goes on to say after this story that the reality is a hero and a coward are no different. They fear the exact same things in life, but it's what the hero does with the fear that makes him a hero. Same as the coward. So there is a hero and a coward living in all of us every single day. We all have fears and doubts and insecurities. Are we going to be the coward or are we going to be a hero and choose to live our dreams? There's a Japanese concept, which we've probably discussed a few times before, called Ikigai. And it basically means your reason to live and why are you here on earth? So my question, and we'll start with Conrad because he's in a happy mood, is I want to hear what you took from this keynote. And part B of that is what's your ikigai and what are you, why are you here on earth? Ikigai is not a, not a new concept to me. It's, it's, it's been something that I've been playing with for probably the best part of a year now. It was a new concept to me about 18 months ago. And when you hear about all these things about your why and your purpose and your passions and all that type of stuff, I, don't, I think it's actually quite interesting when you look at the concept of Ikigai, which is the, the convergence of four, four things. Um, what you love doing, what the world needs. Um, two other things. Top of my head. How did I just go blank just there? Look at the picture there. What I love. What I love. What I can be paid for. Yeah, what I can be paid for. So that's that's the intersection. And what's the, the crossover between the two there, Maddie? Oh, it's printed really small, but it's basically <laughs> passion, mission, vocation, and profession. So the intersection of these four circles give you those four in, uh, overlaps, and then those four circles in the middle of that is what they call your purpose. Um, I'm At this point in time, I believe my purpose is to... I say lead, but it's more so to serve people and to help them get to their best versions of themselves. That's that's what I'm working with. That's my purpose in life. I use basketball as a tool for that. I use uh, my financial services business as a tool for that. I use my role as a father, my role as a brother, my role as a friend as a tool for that. Um, and that's to enable people to, to move to the greatest version of themselves. Uh, through through conversation largely um, and through telling stories, um, that's what I, what I exist for. Do you... Are you, do you feel or have you the awareness of, you know, like the story, the hero and the coward? Do you feel them in... Oh, for sure, man. I mean, I, and I, and I, when, I, when I heard that story through the TED Talk, I hadn't heard that story before, um, but I, I've come to the conclusion that and agree that everybody has all those elements within them or those both of those elements in them. And it's a, it's a, it's a decision or a choice that you make that dictates the outcome. And I, and I can honestly say that for a large part of my life... Um, you know, I probably was, in reflection, a coward because I walked away from the hard thing that was between me and what I wanted. Um, and whether that was knowingly or whether it was because I had a belief pattern that interrupted me, um, it just didn't, I didn't get beyond that. Um, but then certain things happened in my life which I, I purposely knew the moment I made a different decision. Um, and, you know, call it slaying the beast or whatever the case might well be. Whatever that represents to you, um, if, you, if you can pinpoint those moments, and I can pinpoint those moments in my life now where I had the opportunity to do that in the past and chose not to for whatever reason, I didn't feel good enough, I didn't feel worthy enough, um, I, I wasn't confident enough, didn't believe myself, enough, whatever the rationale was, um, I, I can put my hand on my heart and say, yeah, I, I know those moments. 
And then I also know the moment in which I chose to make a different decision. Yeah. Interesting, um, hey? Uh, you can, and I, I, I would agree. I, if you gave me a five, ten minutes, I would be able to probably put down five, you know, different moments in, in life where I, I made a different decision. And that, that one decision changed you know, all courses of, you know, all the course of my life. Well, it's all, it's all about choices, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, life, and one thing I've been working on this year, using the word choices specifically, is, you know, we talk about affirmations, we talk about all these types of things. Um, the, guy, the guy that I've been doing some work with this year, William Whitecloud, he calls them choices. And, you know, each morning he says, you know, between six to nine choices, what choices do you want for the vision that you're trying to create? Um, which is no different to affirmations, which is no different to a prayer or what most people refer to a scientific prayer. It's the it's the setting of your mindset um, and thinking in advance to complete the, um, the the journey that you have to be on. So with with reference to these two um, these two blokes that what are they called fighters or soldiers? Warriors. Uh, they, were the, they were the warriors. So warriors. They were the, okay. they were so the warriors. So if they set their vision to see the, the the beast, one of them saw past that. The other one didn't quite. And that's, well, he, he saw that he would. Sorry to cut you off there, Mike, but he saw that he was willing to go there or die trying. Right? Yeah. So that was. And and that's you know we talked about it a few weeks ago in relation to um, the Mario brothers, right? And the, and the goal of uh, the, the 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 Mario game was to get to the princess, but along the way you had to avoid all the friggin' turtle shells and all the all the hard things. But the Did goal we talk was. About that? Was I missing? I didn't. No, I that would have been great. That must have been another conversation. Yeah, <laughs> another like topic. No, no, no. There was when we talked about the ants and stuff, mate. The focus. What you focus on with the with the with the potato. Stuff. I remember. Uh, I wasn't here. Oh, really? Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's the end result that you focus on, right? So so when you focus on the end result, you're not getting captivated or distracted by the things that are trying to stop you along the way. You've got the belief that they're just there to get you, you know test your desire the brick walls let's talk about brick walls and and yeah. that um that story that we did with marco now these things aren't there to deter you they're there to see how much you want it because mm. they're, they're not impossible clearly they're not impossible in that story they haven't been impossible in my life so they're not impossible yeah. they just want to test you what i found with that story was that it's it doesn't go deep enough the story it says you've got a hero it says you've got a coward or actually, it says you've got two heroes at the beginning, pretty much, and then one one becomes the hero, one becomes the coward. But why? Like, there's why no, did there's that? There's no darkness or death well, in it. But, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> but that's exactly if, if, if Jordan Peterson spoke it, this man would be fucking hard right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but this is exactly what I'm saying, though. It is the the guy that became the hero faced the fear and faced the suffering. Sure. And faced the the hard the darkest part. I love how you got suffering in there. Well, he did. He had to. He had to face the darkness, and the darkness was the tiger. It could have been death. Could have been whatever. He had to face it, and that's what the hero is: is somebody that confronts the darkness. And Jordan Peterson talks about <laughs> the, it's the hero's journey, man. It is the hero's, hero's journey, journey, but it talks about the uh, Arthur. Joseph Campbell talks about it. So. Well, yeah, Joseph Campbell came up with the kind of twelve, or yep. the, and Star Wars is based on that as well. 100%. And you know, you've got the choice as a hero to. To face the fear, but then, you know, facing that fear and facing your your true darkness, because you have to face your own darkness, and that's what it is. It's it's nobody what, else's. What I found more more interesting in this one, no, but but talk, tell me how you relate that to the fighter, the fighter that he was talking about. Oh, like the the his um champions or yeah. whatever. It's confronting. It's having to face the fear, isn't it? But what didn't he? He talked about one specific fighter who had, who had probably less than what he did growing up. And it was, it was a ten to one odds on to, to lose the, the bout that he was about to go in. Yep. That to me was a more extreme version of. So but it still about, doesn't get down to the deeper point of how they, what what is it that actually gets somebody to that stage? Like what are the subconscious level? But he was fighting oh, for a nation. Actually, he got down to. He was yeah, fighting yeah. for the Philippines. He was fighting for his mum and dad. He was fighting because yep. these people were trying to rise up through and beyond. Yep. So the so the keynote goes on to to talk about specific fighters and their stories. I can't say the guy's name. No, I can't either. I won't even, won't even try. Definitely <laughs> check it out. But my, my question back to the, that, Mike, is I think the point of that story was that these they both had the same training. They were both prepared. It was just that split decision. And potentially either of them could have chosen either path. And if they'd both chosen one path, it might have but been But there's a reason different. why. No, there is a reason why. Yeah, but I, I, think, I think that it was so, like, that, that's the piece that he they was They both had the same design. It wasn't, no, they couldn't have. 
Yeah. Well, what I, is I, it that they didn't have? That what was the was it something that happened in the guy's childhood? Well, he, or? He, he, he didn't want. He didn't desire the outcome enough. But why though? This is what I'm. You, we're still on this sort of level here. Why didn't he do that? What was the the mechanism in well, his well, brain? So you would you would you? I guarantee, if your house was on fire and your child was in there, you would find a way. Yeah. What yep. about somebody else's child was in there? You'd find a way. You'd find if it meant something to you, you'd find a way. And that's the meaning, okay, so... So the guy that ran away didn't attach enough meaning to the outcome. It wasn't a childhood thing. It was he wasn't prepared to. He doesn't, he doesn't want enough. So this is, let's talk about achievement but, in general. I think they, they set the story up as they both love the princess unconditionally, yeah? Mm. They both, they, that's the way yeah, the story's kind of set up. He, it's not set up as one guy's a little bit more... No, 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 no it's not. But when, when push comes to shove, when you make a decision, one of them chose their life... Versus the outcome. Yep. So one had to value the outcome more. Yep. And I think that's common in all aspects of life when you come to decision. You know, you, even on the basketball court, you could be just as prepared, put as much effort in as everyone else on there. But it's the decisions that you make and the courage in that exact moment yeah. of whether you push forward, regardless of whether you desire. You could still desire it, but I think the, the I get from it is like. The, in, the the difference between the two is one had the the courage to risk everything, and the other to face the fear, to, to face, face the, the fear, darkness. The yeah. other, um, I guess, which is yeah, the coward took the. He didn't want to. He valued, I guess, his own life more than the love for the princess, and so therefore, it come back to the desire. Where the other one was probably willing to sacrifice his life for the love. Yeah, um, we probably didn't have the belief deep. as well, because you remember this is these were both secret loves. Yeah. So he might not have also had the belief that he had any chance. So that with deep within his system, he might have just thought, "Well, I'm I mean, it's not going to happen anyway." There's, I guess, the micro elements within it. Um, I've had the luxury of watching Shatri, yeah, live, uh, yeah, with yourself, Matt, in Singapore, and never knew who he who he was. And um, I think the 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 TED talk that's on YouTube, which is there's not a lot on him. Is really like a training wheels version of his actual yep. Yep. <laughs> um, keynote. Well, I would um, I would fly back to see him deliver that yeah. same keynote. Um, it was probably one of the best. Would you fight a tiger? No, to go and see him? <laughs> no, I don't love him that much. But I, it was just the it was the, the energy, as you say. Yeah, but for me, it's like that courage that courage element, and I talked about it in I think a few threads around you know the the kind of what caring of what other people think and because like we were at the at a conference where we we're watching gary v speak as well um and you know it takes the same element of the the courage of not caring of the the outcome i guess yep. and, and facing those fears regardless yeah. but there's also a balance isn't there because can you let that fear go too far can you become like your Darth Vader, like take you know, go into the darkness too deeply you know that guy did anything for her what else is he going to do for her that's what I'm trying to get to that. But, like, but it says here, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather requires it. Courage is the willingness to act in spite of your fear. So courage and action are pretty, pretty much synonymous when you talk about the, the example you're talking about. Yeah. The thing is when you're faced with anything on a day-to-day basis, it's like you have two choices. I mean, you've, you've got a choice. You face it and you, you take action. And I think yeah. a lot of us hold ourselves back out of not the fear of whatever that may be and you stop on making decisions or yep. moving forward or taking action um, in, in in all aspects. I'm just really interested on the wh- like why do they do that? Not not just you do it either because you're, you're, you're fearful or matter? not. I don't know. I'm, because I, I, I get what you're the saying. The deeper but psychology I'm of it. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't feel like the story led to that. Like I get I get where you're coming from and it's certainly something we could dig into. But I but think it was you're just, saying there's a hero and a coward. It was just what? really going at choice and like like which choice do you want to make? Like, but then you could go another take that courage. I mean you could also go another level up back to Icky Icky Guy, which is also part of it, which is the purpose, right? You could say between the two of them, if you wanted to go full high level, the universe was speaking to one of them. It mm-hmm. was one of the one of both of them both had a purpose. Yep. One was meant to be the coward because the princess can in some aspects, only be with one anyway. Um, you know, we, so, d- we don't know the princess. But no, you, know. you don't know the princess. <laughs> it's true. But in and terms from, of standards. What I know about history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it comes back to Icky Guy. Maybe the other guy, that was his life purpose. And that's kind of what Chattery leads on to, um, where he had to discover his, his purpose, um, what he felt it was, um, and face those fears, yep. um, which kind of led to, I guess, finding his um, Icky Guy. 
um, which is just phenomenal. And, and he obviously references a lot of martial arts. I mean, it's a, um, which I can relate to as well. Um, it's a courage piece. And he shares quite deep stories of the fighters because um, it's like the UFC of Asia. One championship. One championship, yeah. Mm. It's, the same, it's exactly the same. Um, guess, and his training, obviously, his martial arts helped him develop how, where he got to the training involved. The, he was a fighter. He yeah. had 30 fights, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he trained martial arts his whole life. Yep. MD, just on your point, um, there's a line in there that he says, uh, what the hero does with the fear makes him a hero and what the coward does with the fear makes him a coward. So I think... Um, He's trying to really reiterate the point that life is full of choices and how you choose to um, use that emotion in that situation rather than yep. you know, real backstory stuff. I think it was a little bit more simpler than that. That's what yeah. I took from yeah, it anyway. But the, you say how, so what's the how? Like how does he make that decision? What's the burn? Like you're saying it's just the icky guy or that, that passion, but I don't know if there's something deeper... I'm probably reading too much into no, that. Actually, no, no, I, I think, think you're right, can, but I don't think it was in that story. I mean, yeah. you're, you're going you're going deeper on the action, which is you know that we can pull that apart. But, but I don't think anyone here's gone that. Because that's what we want to get to. We want to get to how you kind of get to that action. Like what, oh, I think what, what he, you have to actually what was, face. What he was focusing and framing was merely that we always have choices. Yep. Um, and what's like so? What's going to get me? Uh, okay, so. In the context of the conversation we're having yesterday over breakfast, Maddie and, and um, Jake, I think you were privy to that one. Um, you know, when you've got troubles in your business or struggles in your business and you've got growth, but what's going to drive you to become better? Yep. It's because you desire the outcome, whatever that outcome looks like. You know, whether that's bottom line profit, whether that's you know higher client engagement, whether that's staff retention, whatever, the, whatever's going to make you become better. Why would you do what you're doing? Is because you desire the outcome more than anybody else. Yep. Okay, and, that, and that's why I frame it with desire, because desire being an emotion, it's a driving emotion. If you don't, if you don't want to eat, you won't eat. You don't desire the food on the table, you won't eat it. Yeah. And how do you think people get to that desire, or find their desire, or find their icky guy? I mean, because I think I'd say well, it's a process. I'm probably still looking for parts of it. I don't know. You maybe have not got it, any it, of it. I don't know. But it's something that to find anything is like I, I call I I don't believe you're born with I don't believe you're born with passion. I don't believe you're born with. I believe it's something that you excavate, you find. Yep. Uh, which means if it's if it's your gold, if it's your jewel, if it's something you value, then you've got to excavate it like you would any valuable material or mineral. You've got to yep. un- unwire or unplug yourself. So what you were saying yourself. with the child before and rescuing from the fire. So that's yep. obvious. That kind of icky guy is inbuilt in you because you're a father. I mean, probably not for everybody or or well, a in that moment that is your purpose. Yeah. yeah. So that's a kind of like a subconscious thing. You will rescue your child without even because thinking. Because you have that, you have that love for that child, that yep. desire to protect. Yep. So you need to get to that kind of level and find. Sure. So that, when I talk desire. about you know people operating at their best, because for me I value people operating at their best, so I can have better relationships with them. They can have better outcomes in their life. Yeah. I think it's yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, we haven't gone around with each individual but i mean going through it it's it's it is a journey and i think it's also the reflection part and asking yourself the, the questions if you listen to chat tree and some of the other stuff it's a lot of reflection yeah. and martial arts as well there's a lot of um that element of, of improvement and there's also improvement and 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 chat tree talks about kind of like his five key takeaways which is you know um success leaves clues find a mentor so surround and which is all the stuff kind of Everything he talks about is what we talk about. Love. You've got to love what you do. Otherwise, you, just, you don't get pulled through it. You've got to really yep. love it. Um, he talks about... But, but just before you go on love, yeah. you, have to go, you have to go down with self-love. You can't learn to love unless you love yourself first. That's still the core basis. Yeah, but you can love something or a be passionate. Um, I don't that, believe you can. Unless... That'll, that'll get you to a certain point, I think. I think to achieve pure greatness... Uh, Self love is paramount, but but you're, you're a reflection of whatever you're a projection, of whatever it is going on internally, right? So if you're looking to love something, be passionate about something, yeah, you got to start with you. But there's a lot of people who achieve success who don't love themselves. I know, mm-hmm. I doubt. Well, no, not true success. No, not no. true well, success. They no. today reframe that they achieve lots. They might. They might. Yeah, but there's a lot of people, and we've seen it recent times where people have achieved success, material success, on face value success, but then they suicide. 
Yes, that's not, so that's where I changed the, the definition, right? So um, movie, in saying that, so, so Chattery talks also about greatness and surround yourself with greatness, improve 1% each day, and then kind of like be the warrior, um, which is, I guess, that taking action. So finding your ikigai is taking action, trying, doing things, questioning. Facing things. Um, yeah, facing yeah. things, facing yeah. those fears. Yeah, yeah. Um, so courage can't exist without action. That's what he's saying. Pretty much, yeah. um, which is true because you've got to make a decision, which is an action. <laughs> and, what, and one can make you the hero or one can make you the coward, I don't know, in, in that situation. Because uh, the guy, the coward, made a decision, didn't he? he that that um, Tom Bernou interview you put on last night in our group, Yep. Rob Drydeck or whatever his name yeah, was. Yeah, I was going to reference him. Died, died, died. <laughs> Ridiculous. He died, he died, he died in died. really well into actually both of the topics we were talking about then, today. I watched it last night, right? Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about desire. He talks about desire. He, he talks does. about passion. Uh, and he talks about not being able to, And I agree with him. I don't believe it's something you're born with. I think you have to uncover it through what life is showing you. You well, didn't know. You, you weren't born with your passion for photography, were you, Trav? No, of course not. All right? Something happened along the way that allowed you to either provoke the interest uh, or come back to a reference point. Absolutely. So where is everyone else's icky guy? At? Jacob, icky guy. Us. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. I'll start with the, the icky guy then. For me, I, over time I've found that the, the purpose I've unraveled and discovered for my business is actually – a reflection of the purpose that I kind of find for my own life um, and that's to help people redefine what's possible for them to achieve with their life whether in the context of my business that's helping people physically redefine what they can achieve but also within this group it might be helping kind of people discover that they can start a new job or start a new business or achieve things that they didn't think were available to them. Um, the biggest piece I took from the from the story is that the decision on whether to be you don't make a decision to be a hero or a coward but it's forced upon you or pressured upon you when there's the pressure of that fear so the the soldiers or the warriors weren't just sitting there kind of getting out their yellow legal notepad and making like a pros and cons list the tiger stepped forward and they made a decision that kind of fear was pushed upon them. It was time pressed, and that's when that um, the icky guy is sort of unravelled. You'll find similar to the example you guys had with a a house on fire. There's a time pressure there, and you have to act. And therefore, some some parents and fathers would go in and save the child. Others would go, "Oh no, I don't want to get burned. I don't want to risk my life." And and that very quickly reveals to the top what your deepest sort of hidden purpose is. Um, so I don't think it's a case of sitting down rationally and going within each person there's a there's a hero and a coward there both waiting, but as soon as you put the pressure on, that's mm. when you find out whether you've got a diamond or, or graphite, I guess. Um, so for me, a personal example I found recently is getting into – and learning the sport of American football is that the position I'm in is one that requires a lot of courage, a lot of fearlessness to go into essentially going to physical battle with people that are bigger than me, people that are more experienced than me, and people that are running me at full speed trying to score. Their purpose is clear. They've got a ball. They're trying to win for their team. I've got to then react to that very quickly and go 100% and give my full force. And I'm finding at the moment whether it's in the context of playing with my teammates and not wanting to hurt them, so maybe there's an empathy piece that's getting in the way, whether it's me being unclear of the goal of my position and therefore the why is unclear, so I'm very hesitant. When you're hesitant and you go into battle, you get hurt. Um, so I'm finding at the moment the coaches are saying, be more physical, be more violent, be go in more, be harder. but Harness your dark side. Yeah, but because I, I can't... The why for me at the moment isn't quite crisp and clear enough. But a good example is as a, one of the players on, on the opposition from a team that we're going to play this season, I've recently found out on Instagram has had an affair and there's there's a few little things that have blown up and it's been very kind of, I don't know, um, 
from a gossip point of view, a bit juicy. Um, Getting to his head, Jacob. Yeah. But uh, that's now for me as like a, a father and a husband, a little bit of fuel to go when we play against that person. I've now got a small why to go and punish that person. <laughs> but So you need to tag it with Travis Hado more, mate. <laughs> in a Hado training Tra- session. Which I find is quite funny. Um, Tra- mm. Trav's, Trav's got ammunition on everybody. <laughs> so I don't know how familiar you guys are with the movie The Water Boy with um, Very Adam Sandler. But super passive, super kind of quiet guy. They couldn't get him at all to to make a tackle, to, to be physical, until one of the players makes fun of his mum, and that's his icky guy. Is <laughs> <laughs> his, his I- mama. And... Then he's just full speed, full ferocious, and that's what they needed to unravel his his why to play. But uh, Trav, would, would you not just say it's accepting your role? Absolutely. I think it's understanding. It. So Jacob, it's knowing the role. If the role is to tackle, that's the role. So you know, Travis, his role on the teams I've been involved with has been largely defense orientated. Yeah. Correct. And and to the point where you're out there to stop somebody, not just to contain them, but to to pretty much stop them from getting on the run that they just got on. Um, and to do that, you've you've got to just sacrifice your game for the betterment of, of everything else. It's uh, it's knowing your role, doing it really well, and then giving more. Yeah. That's the way I try to, to see what I give in a team sport or in a situation, and, and you can take that into a, uh, a work situation as well. You know, knowing your role within the organisation, um, executing it really well, uh, but plus going over uh, beyond and... Uh, beyond that, over and beyond, and um, giving more value to the group, the team, yep. um, to the company. Uh, that that's the way I see it, and that's the way I approach those situations. But you still need your icky guy to get you to that point, yeah. Or the emotion. There still needs well, to be knew, something. He knew why he, you know, he knew yeah, yeah, exactly. Why yeah. he existed in that team. His role yep. was very clear to him. Yep. Um, and you, uh, you know, for those that don't know Travis or have not watched him train, he plays like he trains to the point where. His teammates might want to punch him at times, and well, they do have punched him at times. <laughs> so that's times. and that's the thing, Jacob. It's a case you, you really immerse yourself. You you accept what your role is. So if your coach has defined your role, you've then got to come to terms with your role, um, and then immerse yourself within that. Now, take him off a basketball court, he wouldn't squash a fucking caterpillar. He's a tree hugging hippie. <laughs> All right, so it's it's that emotional intelligence to know when to switch it on and switch it off. And some of us, including me at times, aren't as good as, which is why I would come in here steaming because I haven't managed to fucking leave the shit at the door. Wheel plants. <laughs> <laughs> so I told you, cheapest parking around. You said you walked in and you said, I've been parking there for years. Yeah, cheap parking. <laughs> Ada, you got anything to share on Chattery? Yeah, I, um, I wrote down two points. Uh, the one... That resonates with me is obviously the the choices, and that's something that I live by a lot. So I won't reiterate the um, that one. But the other one was, um, and it, it doesn't just uh, it's not just fear as well. But it, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it in fear. If fear is just an emotion that everyone feels, um, it's okay to feel something, and, and yeah. it's how you react that dictates who you are. Respond, so trapped. Respond. Respond. Sorry, sorry, Conrad, Kanye. But sorry. you're a manager, so the re- reacting might be the word for you. Um, yeah, so how you respond. So you look at the, the world champion fighters and they were sitting there and they're trembling um, prior to a massive fight and they've trained their whole life for it. Uh, and sorry, Jacob, so I'm just moving away, trying to crack another beer quietly. <laughs> and I was giggling. Um yeah, it's, it's how you respond to that fear. But it's, it's also acknowledging that it's okay to feel it. Um, it's mm. okay to yeah. um, to feel that emotion, no matter what it is, if it's sad, you know, it's anger or uh, it's pity or, you know, all, all these, you know, um, quotation marks, negative emotions or happy emotions. Uh, it, it's okay to, you know, to understand them and, and feel them. Um, but yeah, just to process the point them, of, right? Yeah, exactly. How you process them, respond, um, is it, probably the it'd most. It'd be unusual. It'd be unusual when you think of it now, because I never thought about those fighters actually trembling or shaking. Mm. But if you come to think about it, I mean, it'd be unusual if there wasn't an element of emotion out there, whether it be anxiety or whatever, that caused that to happen. 
you know, you're about to jump in the ring and get the fucking shit beaten out of you. <laughs> well, even just in all sports in general, I mean, you see a lot of even champions that always start poorly. Yeah. And I, I would say that's a lot of what they've actually got to get in there, take a couple of hits or lose, be down a few points or whatever it looks like to actually get them into the right framework to yeah. do. But like I said, they're not fighting a tiger, so they've got time. But like, uh, there's a lot of fighters that will always almost get knocked out at the start and come back and win just about every single ro- fight because they've obviously been behind in the locker room in, in a state like that. Thanks for the beer. Mm. That was not quiet at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's going for round two. The Spanish is over. So like when you tip, sorry, it's sort of like when you tiptoe around the house in the morning, you're yeah. trying to be quiet. It's like, you just go and do it. <laughs> Mate, wait till you've got kids in the house. You are. We're going to have round two when the cans all crack open. Um, but uh, Chattery offers a really good insight into the to the fighters, which is that, you know, they face these fears all the time. And, like, people see even, you know, Conor McGregor with the bravado and all of that. But, you know, there's that still that fear and the, the preparation and everything yeah. that's gone into it that they would face all, yeah. all the time. Connor probably does that to kind of mask that. 100%. Sort yeah, of, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, it's part of his brand, which is a whole other topic again. Um, but... Yeah, like they face that all the time. And um, chatri has got some really good stories. Uh, again, I'm not going to pronounce his name either. That Filipino uh, fighter, mate. Yeah, like, the Filipino that fighter. That whole story is phenomenal. Well, if you if you really want to talk about fighters, you look at like a Ronda Rousey who was that uh, dominant in yeah. her field and then she she got beaten. Uh, and and then, hasn't been able to come back. Yeah, it was, you could never even come back. You know, and, and the next time she got beaten within, what, 30 seconds or 40 mm. seconds? But uh, that's a, a whole other podcast about psychological. Uh, oh, that would be fantastic. Emotional that stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone was going to jump in. There. <laughs> it's unusual that no one was prepared to jump yeah, over the top and yeah. say something. Yeah. It looked at me and I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> well, I was just waiting for someone. So, well, man, what, what, what was the, the driver of sharing this? And then, um, mm. yeah, yes, we'll man, um, it out. The driver was sharing it. Um, I was looking back at some content. What did I want to bring? And I just, as you said, JB, it was one of the best um, presentations I'd seen in a long time. Uh, the, the video that, I mean, the TED Talk just couldn't even begin to do the justice of the energy or the, do justice to showing the energy and presence that he brought to that stage. And it, this wasn't. This was in front of about maybe 800 to 1,000, but his presence was was phenomenal and it was something that I just wanted to share. And I think the, you know, the concepts that we've certainly at least talked about amongst the group before, I'm not sure if we've really talked about Ikigai before on the actual podcast. No, we haven't. And I suppose it probably needs a topic in itself to pull yeah. it apart properly. But more I wanted to sort of go through that story. And I, and I know where you're going, Mike, um, with, with your question around you know the why. And I think that directly ties into to generally where you're at still, you know, sort of trying to charge and, and find out that minute answer on the why. But I just really liked how it, it showed, you know, it showed that we, we all do prepare. We all do this and almost everything is just a decision because no matter what you do over the 12-month period or whatever period that is, you're going to do the same amount of work. I'm just wondering what that little spark is. Though. Is it evolutionary? Is it from like three million years on ago? That I was or? thinking about listening him into Shatri. So Shatri grew up with martial arts, and I think again, it's a. I, upon listening to it today, would it, I guess it's come to agreement that the passions or those loves are formed over years, and and the, and all these other elements. You don't just are born loving photography or for myself, three D or whatever it may be. Um, you, you know, Shatri grew up with martial arts. And he was in a um, the corporate world and managing hedge funds, and he just had the yearning of going back to something. And he acknowledges that he he saw the opportunity as well in that these billion dollar sporting brands, and there was nothing in Asia. And then you know he just felt this yearning, and I guess there's an element of which I recently um, listened to Tasha's episode um, of Our Simple Minds. You should check out. And how she talked about listening to the, you know, the heart or the universe and, and, and touching with your intu- intuition. Your I, internet. Your, your internet. <laughs> Not bad. And Chatri, I think, when you listen to the story, he touched into that. And just everyone around him was like, no, no, what are you doing? And he's like, no, I'm going to create this thing for martial arts. I'm, I'm passionate. This is, this is, he just had, I guess, something. And I guess there's an element of you've got to find the silence or it, 
like the lion comes up and forces you to then go, well, I've got to do something. I either sit in the, uh, the, the corporate hedge fund with all my luxuries yeah. and, and um, showing off and all of that, or I'm going to potentially risk it all, uh, you know, for the lion, which yeah. is for him one championship, um, and, and, and just do it. And, yeah. and I think it's following and trying to listen to the, the heart or the intuition of what it says you should do. Um, and I think I, particularly me going away has helped me reinforce in the last 12 months and even the last few months more so has helped me under, um, discover or uncover even deeper. And it's kind of like you talked about the, the mining component of it. And I think it is that, like these little moments I stood up on stage in, in Europe. And for me, that was a look almost like a little uh, shovel or a dig of uncovering a little bit deeper of maybe what my ikigai could be. Yep. You know, and like, oh, Actually, that's maybe the the right avenue. I really enjoyed that. I got a buzz out of that. Um, yeah. That's maybe now an element into what it is that I that I want to do, because I've been questioning that for the last six months. You know, this whole kind of uh, a few elements, and um, you know, I can completely relate to to Shatri. And so, I think for everyone out there, it's kind of like try to find the space. Yeah. And the time, and, and it's or put, your, bit, put yourself in hard situations because I think that's what martial well, that's pressure, what martial arts kind of, yeah martial arts does that. You're faced with fear every time you're doing something like yeah, having a sparring. And, and Jacob they, worded it well. I got I got mine from a fortune cookie, so you can always start that route too. <laughs> it's tied to martial arts, and that I guess leads into um, as well the the second part of what we wanted to talk about um unless matt did you have anything you wanted to wrap out with with what that is or actual actual rap rap yeah. there's, there's, a, rap. there's a big m and m battle going on I, just I now go so we want a rap to... battle but no i think m and m just released the whole diss track apparently oh, against um, machine gun kelly yeah, it's insane yeah. anyway sorry i just wanted to wrap it with, with what <laughs> came to mind and that so everyone, everyone crack their beers so we can well, get done with. The hell are these weird yeah, things? I, I, I just tried to work out why the whole <laughs> oh. of, Okay, that why Justin's beer is all over me in a Conrad Francis in special. <laughs> Did a Conrad. <laughs> no. I'm trying to outdo you. You'll never so, outdo that. that yeah. well, one thing I wanted to say, sort of sort of to you, Mike, but just in, in general, and one thing I've sort of self-discovered in the last at least 12 to 18 months I've really realised, like, months. I kept wondering. Hey? I thought, thank God you said month. I thought you might go 12 or 18 hours. <laughs> right. Well, maybe. Um, I just really have discovered that, that I- Ikigai, I think it will find you, but I think we we do this thing where we just don't take action because we're not quite sure what it is. And I don't think you can find it unless you're taking action. Whatever action it is, whatever you feel like, Massive is, is your Massive ikigai action. right now? Just go at it because yeah. and look, that might be wrong, but then you pivot. But if you sit still and do nothing, you'll just stagnate and nothing will happen. And I think you've and I've it. felt that myself a lot lately. So no, no, I'm doing a lot more. I'm facing things a lot more in the last couple of years than I ever have. Yeah, no, no, um, I'm, I'm not having a go. I'm just saying that's that was that's my response and my feeling to it because I felt like that. Yeah, I, these decisions. I wasn't, I wasn't going I, down the path of well, not, not to a degree. I think all of us are still searching for something. Hmm. Always, I think till till our dying day we will be. Um, no comment, Mark. <laughs> well, we did get a grab of um, Conrad saying he is a coward. So can we get that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's it's use that over. I and have over. been. I have been. You have been. Sorry, but yeah, I yeah. also think it's a it's a huge element of um, I think in today's um, world the biggest fear or line that we all face is what what others think about us, mm. and it's the courage and facing that which allows you to find your key guy. That's been the, my biggest challenge over yep. the last uh, I guess you know for a while, and I think in today's world um, the with the way that we're connected and and so much of how we have it, that fear of what someone else thinks, and Gary talks about a lot, your parents and your individuals and the schooling and all this other stuff. Hashtag FOPO. Yeah, FOPO, hashtag FOPO, (laughs) holds us back. And that's the lion, I think, every day Um, because you starting a business or you starting that passion might go against the grain of what your closest people that you love actually think you should do. And Shatri touched on that too. And it's like, no, fuck you. This is what I want to do. I'm going to try it. If it fails, so what? Um, And then you move on. So I'd like to pair the element with you've got to take action, but I think you've also got to stop caring what others think. Um, because that starts to allow you to understand. Well, that helps you take the action. uh, Yeah, it's paired and discover what that could be. 
and it's a, an ongoing journey. Jervy. Journey. <laughs> Beef jervy. Jerky. Jerky. <laughs> jerky. Um, the beer. So on that, I guess part of taking action, um, Jacob, you've got a kind of a really great um, second topic to kind of help support that. So what do you want to bring to the table? Yeah, absolutely. So to, I want to bring habits to the table um, at a very micro level in terms of the specific habits that we as us six either have recently or are trying to cultivate and what impact that has or will have on our lives and our sort of impact, but also on a very macro level about the general habits of society over the recent years, decades, or even centuries and how that's shaping and forming um, the way we sort of progress as a community as well. So on a very micro and specific level, um, one I'd particularly that I'm working on, and you guys will have a bit of a laugh about this, is sort of time man- <clears throat> time management. Being able to, we have a, a 7 a.m. breakfast club. Considering you're late to podcasting today. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, I'm very rarely on time. Um, and it's just because I don't manage to f- I try to fit too much into into a fixed amount of time. Um it happens every morning. It happens every time. Every time I know I have to leave at a certain time, I, I forget that there's a 15-minute drive. I forget that there's um, – I've got 30 minutes worth of stuff to do and only five minutes to of, to spare. So, what, what does your morning look like before brekkie on a Thursday? On a Thursday? Um, more or less, alarm goes off. I wake up. I lay in bed and peruse. Yeah, well, there you go. You're laying in bed perusing too long, obviously. <laughs> Peruse coat or something else. What are you perusing? Like the room, the ceiling? Um, no. Is that um, a code word? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's innuendo. No, I'm just just Facebook, Instagram. So I'm, I'm reacting. I'm, okay. We need to put your phone at least four meters away from the bed. Or just, have, or just have some discipline. Not three and a half. No, four. Or just four have meters. discipline. Four point one. <laughs> but yeah. these are little things you could you could try. hundred yeah. percent, yeah. But um, you just so you just you know what you're doing wrong then in regards to if you're late in the morning. Don't do that in the morning. Yeah. And again, like the reason to a degree that I was late to the podcast today is because I had perusing sp- again, where was perusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just <laughs> Underestimated. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Underestimated how long you certain would tasks for. would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, so times one we can discuss as well. Um, another is just how you fill your time, or, or so I know a, a habit I formed probably a year or two ago, when we, especially when I started um, catching up with you guys, was. Instead of listening to the radio in the car, I'd listen to a podcast or or an audio book. Um, I'm that's trying. A good, that's a good one. That's, that's a big yeah. one that I think anyone can do. They can. A really big thing was I just turned off the the radio, so that when I turned the keys and turned the car on, it wouldn't even pop up. So it was silent, and I just plug it in and go. Um, another sort of basic habit I've been trying to form is rather than a perusing on my phone, um, looking at every time I feel the desire to look at Instagram or Facebook, try and put the phone down, and grab a book instead. Because it's something I'm very acutely aware of is that my son Henry mm. is 12 months old. He's very sort of impressionable. He sees my wife and I sitting on the couch looking at our phones. He hasn't, has he seen you perusing before? Mate, he's not going <laughs> to see anything when he's on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what? I, th- I don't know if I missed it or if you haven't said it. Why are you trying to fix these habits or do yeah. these habits or what? What is what's the end goal? What's why? The is, yeah. Why? Um, why do you need to fix the mornings or why do you need to fix the you know Instagram or Facebook time or? I think in terms of I'd rather rather than spending an hour or two a day on Instagram just scrolling. Th- it's not posting on Instagram and creating content for the world like that'd be fine. It's just scrolling through random stuff and just absorbing content. It's sort of entertainment rather than with any given purpose. And I feel 
that but time. Entertainment is a purpose. Yeah, makes it gives that little hit, doesn't it? It's well, that. it's entertainment. It makes you feel good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I guess I f- I feel like I should be spending that time instead reading or learning or self developing or to. I was waiting for that. I don't, there's only a certain number of hours in a day, and sure. I, but if you're happy with your life, what's wrong with entertainment? Are you happy with your life, Jacob? This is the big question that Conrad's trying to get to. Now. Um, I think that's where travel's trying to come with it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that you, know, you have to understand why you want to yeah. fix this habit that first. That desire, right? Not just because, because a self-improvement yeah. thing said you've got to do it. Yeah, exactly. Or Jocko told you. You're reading Jocko <laughs> Willing just now, aren't you? So yeah, you, I'm not getting up at 4.30 to well, get some. Well, obviously not. Get some. Because you'll never like, actually, that habit will never stick if you don't understand yeah. why you're yeah. doing it. Because if you just... If you're just doing it for the sake of it because a podcast told you to do it and you're trying to you know, be get up in the morning straight away and have a cold shower, right? <laughs> uh, if you don't understand why you're doing it, six yeah. months down the track, it'll fall away. It'll go, yeah. It'll, if you get six yeah. months down the track. And you don't have a burning icky guy forcing you to spend that time <laughs> on something else. So I would argue that you're okay where, with where you're at but also you want to improve where you're at. But the okay side of where you're at is like my circumstances are fine. Nothing's like dragging me out, forcing me to take that time and put it into something more important. Yeah. The desire to change the habit is not is currently lesser than the desire to just continue doing what I'm doing. Well, you did touch on spending more time with Henry now that you've got a, a one-year-old. I yeah, mean, 100%. It, it, and you could look at it like, you know, 15 or how long did you say on this? 45 minutes a day. An hour. If you add that up over yeah. a year. If you open your phone, it'll tell you. Okay. Does it oh, really tell you? It does. <laughs> but um, so you could add that up over a year, calculate that, whatever it is, and that could be time spending with Henry. So, I mean, that yeah. could be something more Powerful, tangible, tangible or pungent. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if it's entertainment, it's still valuable. But yes and no, it can be. But if it's just that sort of, you know, that zombified kind of scrolling, not really for any, that's a... But if you, if you understand why you're doing that, because sometimes well, you just need yeah. a mental break. You know, definitely. Like, I am not choosing, first thing in the morning, though. You don't, need, a break here. <laughs> you don't need a mental break yeah, when but, you first wake I, up. I, I challenge on that, Doug, because I understand why you would place the phone in another room. And uh, no, I don't. I don't. My heard, phone's right beside yeah, you. Exactly, but I hear some people say this, but like someone said to me the other, well, probably about a year ago, you know, I walked into a meeting and I was on my mobile phone. I said, you, you're always on that phone. Card. I said, I said, it's because I'm always on this phone that I can actually sit here and have a coffee with you. Otherwise, you have to come see me in the office. I said, so things do serve you, right? They don't not all disserve you. And you, you, you do a lot online regardless, right? More than most people. And your business is a look, feel, wellness type business. But Jacob obviously feels that he is spending too much time doing the... Well, that's not I, I actually Jacob, don't get where's your that. phone? Okay. So I'm, I'm look at your phone. I actually don't get that Jacob feels like that. I get that Jacob's questioning or doing a time order, but I don't actually get that he, that he feels like he has to change. So on your iPhone, you can go to settings, battery, oh, that's how, oh God. last Conrad, 24 hours, oh, and so it will it. tell you how long you've spent um, on particular apps. Oh. Settings. Well, I'm there for a while. Battery. You, you, you've got digital marketing business. I mean, you should be on there like four, phone, 40 minutes on Insta, 28 minutes on LinkedIn, 24 minutes on Mail. I got six minutes on LinkedIn, Instagram. 24 hours. What about seven days then? You can click seven days as well. Find battery. Where is it? Last seven days, 3.6 hours on Instagram, 2.9 hours Facebook, 6.6 hours on the phone. Slack is an I'm hour. always on Messenger. Does that count as Facebook? Yeah, me too. That's yeah. my most, that's my biggest one. So uh, mess- what, the, no, what does down. the percentage mean of your phone usage? No, no, you can click time. Next click to the it. time, it'll tell you the number of hours. Oh, okay. There is it, okay. I mean, Jacob as well, like... Is it part of you're not achieving certain things that you want to achieve, or, or is it, is it just yeah back to I guess cause. at the moment <laughs> just it's just cause. a it's a feeling that you guilty Ooh. feel guilty. It's a little yeah. Well, one is if I spend an hour on Instagram just scrolling through rather than reading a book, then in years, months, etc., could I be <laughs> further ahead? Will I look back and go that hour spent? on Instagram was better served than at our reading a book, for example. Um, when I'm <clears throat> hanging at home, kind of on the couch, watching a video or on Instagram or something, um, rather than hanging out with Henry or even yeah. reading a book, I feel like. Is Trav naming and shaming? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, Trav's taking some photos of that. Is this a viewer phone, Matt? I know, that's Jacob's <laughs> Jacob's <laughs> <laughs> I think Instagram was, was what, six that's hours? Six, for the, six point so four hours. Better. Just so you feel better, um, Jacob. Uh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I was lecturing at Notre Dame University and I got I got them all to open their phones and have a look at this. And one, one guy had spent <laughs> like 13 hours on socials in the last 24 hours, including Jesus. YouTube. Including wow. YouTube. <laughs> Every, wow. He was way out of the park from everyone else. 13 <laughs> hours in 24. Yeah. Now, to give you some, to reference mine, like. Travis already has. That's six, <laughs> six and a bit hours on Instagram over seven days. So, like a bit under an hour a day on Instagram, about 45, yeah, minutes, on, 45 minutes on Facebook. So it's three hours on YouTube, but that's when I'm listening to podcasts yeah, in the car. You're running, you're running campaigns, you're driving your marketing. I mean, yes, some of that time you're, you are admitting A lot of that time it. on Facebook this <laughs> week, the last seven days, was, yeah, just replying to messages from our competition. I don't, but, um, I don't see a problem with it in in a sense of 10 years ago, you'd probably watch three hours of TV a day, yeah. but that's cut down to maybe an hour, a half an hour. Yeah, or the bachelor. Yeah. And you know, you're replacing that with uh, another form of entertainment or another yeah. form of yeah. you know, something to... Kind of switch the brain how off. Do you yeah. go to, how often do you go to a cinema in a, in a week or a month? Oh, it'd be like quarterly, maybe at the moment. Yeah, see, it's a life's changed, right? Life's changed. I mean, I, I still like going to the movies, and I probably go once, maybe twice a month. Um, yeah, there's two, two and a half hours plus travel time. It's not that. It's only if you've got a problem, or you, you're feeling that guilt, or you've got to. I think we've got to frame things, and I think it's really important what what your Travis just said. It's what we have used our time for in the past. We are re, we are reshaping using our time for differently than. Activity is much more easier to coach in inactivity, yeah? So if you're not happy with your time, spending wherever it is, then shape it or curve it or curtail it. But I actually don't get that you're not happy with your time at all. I well, think he, you're just no, but he said he is unhappy because he's always late to places. But I don't think it's his social that's doing it. No, the social is definitely not to blame for being late. That's just poor lack of time management. <laughs> but I think... You know, coming back to the fundamental point, like habits are the key um, to progress and, and success and going to the to the next level. I, 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 I agree yeah. with time audits. Whenever um, I work with someone, I need to know. Not what just time audits, time. all sorts of habits. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like we, you touched on Conrad, Rob, um, Dredek, um, yeah. no, pro- Dredek. Dredek. the skater. Skater. How Predict- cool was he, man? Pro yeah. skater. I want to go out and get a skateboard. You should again. watch that video because it tied so well into this because he oh, yeah. talked habits um passion and structure yeah, structure he was structure. super big on structure and habits that enabled him structures. to get to the next level um and he fucked up right he he was about to have his major major fucking sponsor shut him down because he had bad habits mm. Mm. and he turned it around in a month or something like that party boy yeah yeah going to, you know doing drugs alcohol yep. all that stuff um and i guess jacob with yourself like that's something i've been I've tried before. So I had some Jacob success. Party boy, look at him. And, and, yeah. Yeah. and and failed as well. But I think with habits, I don't know about you guys. From the I've implemented quite a few over the last twenty four months. Um, but I think you can only do one or two at a time. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think that's the key. Yeah. Like you can't just go Over-load tomorrow. Too. I'm gonna eat healthy, go to the gym, meditate, journal, um, and off you go. <laughs> but you've got to. Go, you can't just. Break a habit know. without having a you know that an extra or a change or some sort of purpose that directly attached to it. Yeah, like, well, because you could yeah. actually change all of those habits. Like if but tomorrow you, could, you can't a, do six of them. You can and maintain if tomorrow, them and maintain them. If tomorrow we were at war, I guarantee you your entire lifestyle would change immediately, and you wouldn't even blink. You can, and we're seeing it happen with one of our friends at the moment. I'm observing it happening a lot in in Dale um, Dale Nelson. We can tag him in, but. He's changed a lot of his life in the space of a few weeks. He's gone through an emotional upheaval. And he was ha- he has not but happy he with built the, the habit. Well, he's, doing, it, he's doing it, it at the moment. Is that, is that do, it, so I'd be curious to check in in a month. For sure, know, 100%. How, but uh, you, however many habits he's implemented have actually stuck. I, I mean, for me as an individual, I know that I, mean, it, it, I had to do them small bits, like one or two habits at a time until it stuck, then add another one. Because then the, the, the mental capacity and the the willpower to go, you know what, I need to do this um, because it ebbed and flowed. Like the cold shower, the the meditating, the journaling, all these little things have taken, 
you couple know, of years. Yeah, and, and it takes only, a long time. It takes yeah. a long time, and only one or two at a time. Um, if you try to do cold shower, meditating, and journaling, I guarantee you it will not stick in three months. I, I agree with Matt. If you put yourself in a situation that yeah, but, has urgency or importance, you can do anything. For ninety nine percent of everyone and all of us. You're not going to be in that situation. Depends. Depends. You could, you know why you that, that situation has to be create. there for five years for, it to, for <laughs> yeah. all of them to stick. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. That's unrealistic. It's unrealistic. You know, I, I don't, no. Unless you've got a lion and like you're facing a, a life or death situation, like you have a I, car. I, change, I, mate, I changed my life. I yeah. changed my life. That was a moment that drove, drove it. Sure. You can't decide. That moment doesn't exist now. No, so I'm not arguing if you have a large <laughs> moment you can't implement. Like if we go to war tomorrow, I agree on that statement. But for the 99% of the real world, you can't just go Monday. Monday's always the best way to start new habits. I'm going to do this. But it the- comes back to your point before about perception because no different. Like our currency collapses or something happens tomorrow. If something, if, if get a big there's this big noise of a downturn tomorrow, then all the companies that should have sacked like 12 people each company six months ago will, will do it. They knew they should have six months ago. But they've just waited for an external measure to allow them not, to do it. But you can make not that building choice. It's not a habit, though, is it? Yeah, like, we're no, not, no, that's saying, not building success. Is, that's, that's, again, facing the, the lion. Um, so I'm saying that, if that you want to make change, yeah, you can, you can you start build, to make change at any time at, at as much level as, as you want. We all can, but I, I don't know. I think what, what you might be referring to is the depth you go with it. If, all right, if, yeah. if you're trying to build habits, simple things of like not looking at the phone when you wake up, you can only do, in my view, one or two at a time until it sticks and then yeah. you add something else. Yeah. You're talking oh. more on a practical yeah. level. Yeah. This is no, practical. This is what we're talking about, yeah. aren't we? Yeah, yeah exactly. We're yeah. not talking about going to war or <laughs> like uh, I agree if there's a fundamental uh, yeah, instance and in life. Everybody has you can flip your right. lifestyle. But if you're just trying to build everyday habits, even like Rob, he talked about it. He did this, all this journaling stuff and all these other elements. You talk, you listen to it, and he acknowledges it takes fucking time. And he also says, focus. We've talked about focus and clarity. You can only change one thing with focus, and it comes back to purpose. If you're trying to change five things, forget about it because you'll fail at all five. Pick one or two, just pick the phone and just stick with the phone for three months until it becomes a habit. Then pick on your punctu- um, you know, punctuality and just focus on that for three months until that becomes a habit. Because the habits won't yeah. stick. And That's reassess, my view. Reassess your relationship with perusing. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> whoever Matt, she is. I think Matt and Conrad are talking about environment and when the environment changes. Then you're kind of forced. Yeah, you're forced. forced. To change. And but I this, agree with that. The environment. And, and Justin's talking about uh, changing a habit for this if, because you want to change a habit or because you want yeah. to implement yeah. something. Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. Well, like yeah. So neither are wrong, but they're yeah. on different levels. Because like if, if you're trying to build out time structure and it does come back to discipline like your meetings if your days are running away from you which i acknowledge mine are you know like because when i was in europe i've got a whole page here of habits i would like to build or improve upon um and they were all small little practical things through to i journal in the morning but i don't journal in the evening i'd like to reflect more i'd like to find the space to do that which comes back to, to time management but i kept reflecting on the question similarly again why am i struggling to build this habit um, and you got to try and tie it back to, to that purpose. I've got heaps of them here, like, you know, just message 10 people of gratitude and I still don't do it. That's a habit mm. I'd love to, to build. Um, instead of just perusing, <laughs> you know, messaging someone, I'm grateful for, you know, for, for being friends. Like, that's stuff I'd like to but do. The but the perusing's not the issue, bro. Like, no. the reason why he's... It's not even like the reason why you're late is because you've decided that there's no real consequence if you're late. Mm-hmm. So you're okay yeah. with that, right? Yeah. And what I'm, what I'm saying, the external environment was, was an example, but it's not just that. Like if you want it bad enough, the change can be instant. internal framework. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, it, it is possible, but the, we, we go back to, oh, what would people think? Or what, what's hard actually, what stops us from making all those changes at once is actually the external environment. And that we're worried about what people will think, or that well, we're going to do something different. It's also our comfort, yeah. you know. Like we still continue to do stuff because it's easier, path of least resistance, and it's comfortable. Um, but that's why we aren't all built with. I think we touched on willpower. There's a limited amount of willpower, mm-hmm. you know, and so you can't make huge change off your own back of free will um, tomorrow. Like, we all can't. We've all talked about it. I know all of us in this room have talked about doing shit, and we haven't um, in the last 24 months. Mm. Well, we did the episode at New Year's, didn't we? 
at the beginning of the year saying we're yeah. going to do this and well, we've we're, talked we're about a week in and we're yeah. sort of but like the cold shower like I've done a cold shower mm. every day since the yep. start of the year um, and I guess it, again it comes back to decision and that's ingrained now you wouldn't be able to get out of the shower now without doing that I think I could <laughs> <laughs> but you don't but you don't though, but do I you? don't yeah um, but you know meditating's ebbed and flowed um, journaling's been pretty consistent yep. um, I'd love to see you guys go into a cold shower we did like a couple of weeks back from once now. I, You're such a hero, Conrad. I know. No, no, it's fucking man. Magic back from Conrad. 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 But it is. It's a, it's a different, different mental process. Are we making yeah, a yeah. computer badge? <laughs> so you can polish it I up. thought you were already making that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Conrad now polishing his badge. I'm not sure he's He wouldn't be able to walk in the room if he's just... His shirt yeah. would be... Um, he'd have too many badges on it, mate. He wouldn't know what to... Oh, no. But decorate. <laughs> so coming, you know, coming back to it, I think it's super important to understand why you want to change it. Mm. You know, and that that's the biggest that's the biggest element. Like I acknowledge I want to change my time management because I want to go to the next level in terms of business and performance and what I want to achieve. Um and I need to get serious about it. Um so can I can I talk to you about that? Yeah. One on, so it's one on one through microphones here, right? I'm gonna I just walked into a Yeah, he yeah. did. All right, we, but but we challenged we, we talked about this yesterday, right? And I know a year or two, probably two years ago, I knew that I needed to get more out of me, time management-wise, more efficiency, more effectiveness. And my reading and research on all of that talked about revisiting the things like exercise, like diet, like sleep, like all those core core things and get your relationship right, get your relationship right with those things. Yes. Because time management becomes easier when you become more efficient and more effective because it's only 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And, and actually, Rob talked about that, right, like last night, which is um, in one of the other ones, um, Impact Theory is a, is, a, is a great channel with some awesome interviews, which we share oh, quite can, a few. You're converted now? Um, I'm con- I was always was. Um, and uh, I lost my train of thought there. But there was one where I watched where one individual, Duran Jones, talked about filling your cup up. Yep. Um, in terms of like, I guess, coming back to time management and building the, he builds the habits. And if you look at all these interviews, there's habits of filling yourself up first before being able, when we talked about serve in the last couple of weeks, it's been a quite of a, a strong kind of theme of serving others um, in the last week or two and filling yourself. And I think that's what the habits come back to is actually filling yourself up first. And he talked about overflowing. Mm-hmm. So there's the element of like you got to look after you before helping others. But his attitude was he wants to overflow, and it's the overflow that be able to, to, give. to give. Yeah. Rather than just fill to the top, then give, meaning your tank actually reduces. Close. He's like, I'm going to give the overflow. So therefore, he tanks never actually reduces, which I thought was an interesting concept, which is part of what drove a lot of my um, element of building new habits. Which a lot of the habits, I think. And even it'd be interesting, Jacob, where you're going. A lot of mine here are around filling myself up, not you know, around energy, rather than um, yep. You know, it's it's all it's all energy, right? Because oh. everything you do, whether it be mental, so. spiritual, physical, emotional, um, gives you energy. And when you're talking to your purpose, your ikigai, uh, your 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 why, and you're talking to that, and you're acting with that as your paramount driver. That everything you do is energetic and about energy. Okay. And, and Rob talked about doing the self reflection tool of what's draining energy. Like, does the sitting on or perusing, does that energize you or, or, yeah. or not? Um, and if it's not, then maybe that's part that's of the, the fuel order. to make the shift at the, the change. And um, he was crazy in analyzing his life. And if you look at a lot of these, um, I also listened to Ryan Holiday, who's great. Um, we've talked about stoicism, all this stuff around analyzing of what drains your energy and what fills your energy. Um, and pu- adding in what, what tops you up and removing what yeah. doesn't. Actually, Rob talked a lot about removing um, and, and, and disconnecting and disassociating. What well, I'm, I'm at the point with people in my life now where I know there's people in my life where I can't be in their presence. I'm okay talking to them on the phone, but I can't be in their presence. <laughs> so we were all okay then. That's good. Yeah, only for an hour <laughs> on a Friday. Just. Well, that, uh, see, that connects a little bit with what I'm doing just now as my <coughs> habit, and that is trying to project more positive feelings and, and judgment on people straight away. Jeez, that'd be hard for you. <laughs> I, don't know where, I don't know where to take that. <laughs> given, the, given the amount of space you spend, right. time you spend in the, in the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> well, exactly. 
So what I'm trying to do, like being in the car and meeting people, is just try and project. Like, because I'll have a judgment of somebody that drives past, look at look at them, <laughs> <laughs> look at them, and go, "I oh, want a dickhead" or whatever. Yeah. And well, it's you, like, why? Why we would... look to the right and go, "Fuck, he's an ugly bastard. He's bald," and, and then you realise it's your reflection. Was that the joke? <laughs> <laughs> was that the joke that you were going to? No, no, no. Uh, it wasn't very funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry to cut it. But no, no, it's like <laughs> quick judgment of people in a more negative. And we've talked about the negative before. How we. We're, we're sort of self-programmed to go down the negative path. So I'm really, really trying to work on, and it works amazingly well. You know, well, everybody knows this. You know, you project love to people and positive stuff to people. That just straight away takes you sky high. But it's not, you're not projecting it on yourself, Mike. Like, you've got this, bro. Just, just go with it. Own it. Yeah, no, that, I do that, own that, it. That is what it is. You're projecting that because you're, you, you're, exactly. that's yeah, how yeah, you yeah. feel so, about you. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, like, that's another topic. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly, but, but we all do it. Like, no, no, of course we do. No, but yeah. I was like, you, you've got it. This is this goes I know, back to I your know I do, and that's why I'm practicing and I'm doing story. it now. And this is the habit I'm trying to yeah. get into is really projecting love to myself, self-love, and doing it. It helps doing it to everybody around you as well. And I'm not saying that's not me. It, it is. We reproject everything onto like it's just like it bounces straight back to you. But that is one thing I'm really trying to work on just now in any little situations as well, like tiny little situations, just being positive instead of negative. You know, even if you're feeling a bit down because something shit happened or whatever, don't take that out in the next person you meet. Um, not getting your car clamped. Um, exactly. You should feel privileged that you oh, got your- I feel your... very privileged right now. <laughs> that's happening. But that's something I'm trying to- <laughs> <laughs> You know, but the theory behind that, I might have missed a car accident along the way, right? If you think about that stupid shit, which I say to people, I think about the, the big Kiwi bike, you got to give him some positive energy. Oh, fuck all the things. Your vibrations went to him. If you were small, I might have threatened him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that also, you know, it comes back to the small shifts, which is where I was going with the habits of like um, Shatri talked about, and I've got notes here of some other elements of the 1% a day, you know, then the compound impacts of 1% a day and how they, the magnitude of. But to know, get to that 1%, shifts. you have to reflect. Yes. You've got to reflect because yes. otherwise, what is the 1%? So one of the other interviews I watched, um, he, uh, I'll have to come back to the individual, was how can I add to my skills? How can I add joy in someone's life? And how can I better serve others? They're the three questions he asks himself every morning, um, which is like super powerful, which really real. comes back to the habits that you could, you could build. So, um, Can you go through those three questions again? How can I add to my skills? How can I add joy in someone's life? How can I better serve others? And there are the three questions he'd ask himself every day. And it's really easy to add joy, isn't it? I'd, I'd be really it's interested really to see easy. whether we, we could reframe those to be affirmations. For yourself. Instead of, instead of asking questions, yeah. posing positive affirmations, so uh, allowing your reticular activation system mm. to, to work for you. So, look, I think, yeah, habits are sitting with me pretty strongly at the moment, so thanks for bringing that that up jacob um i think habits are the the key if you uh, the the common thread is is habits 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 one percent make the shifts and um one of the things i looked into my journal here that i read was that can your per can your purpose be you which is almost like that icky guy coming back to filling up your your tank it sounds a little bit selfish but can your purpose be you well, it, it can, well is, you are yeah you are the the mechanism which is really cool um on that Anyone else want to add some any, any final quick words? habits? Quick habits. Travis, I've got a joke. Have you got, right? a, have, <laughs> have, have, before, have you got a quick habit, Travis? Uh yeah. Well, actually, funny thing is, the two that I wrote down, I went one brushing your hair and one a little bit. Um, <laughs> don't don't micro. watch. Don't follow Travis on Snapchat. You'll see a few of his habits. And the um, <laughs> the my first one was uh, positive mental affirmation. So it's all about energy. I'm a big energy person. So oh, so ha- so you do affirm. Myself, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, is, it, is it what morning, night? When do you have a structured time of day, you do it? No, not really. Just not <laughs> when I feel like it. No, I, uh, ideally, it's it's like morning, improve in the morning. Yeah, my morning routine. Yeah. What That's, does it look like? What do you what time. what like just self talk? Uh, I have a lot of uh, quotes on my mirror. Yeah. Uh, so for some reason, I gravitate to one of those quotes, and then I just kind of look at it while I'm brushing my teeth. And... But you don't really look like you use a mirror for very long. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, uh, he's going to say he's naturally. It's because he's reading all these things. He's not concentrating. Or is, is yours one of those dudes where you spend a lot of time making it look messy? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. For anyone that don't know, I, I have long hair down to my shoulders. And, uh, 
generally it's a mess. So no, I have two minutes while I brush my teeth on my electric toothbrush. So I, um, my other one was um, neater and tidier. That's one thing I'm mm. trying to be because uh, I hate I hate clutter. I'm very good at being yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> his wallet. Don't look at his wallet. George Costanza. <laughs> Take a photo of his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, neater and tidier. Like I. Uh, I think being tidy in my life, I it declutters my mind and allows me mm. to really think straight. So uh, I've gotten really kind of messy, especially with my clothes lately. I just leave my clothes everywhere. But the kitchen is always spotless clean. You know, the lounge room is always spotless clean. But my office, my car, and my clothes are the three things that just kind of piss me off. I like used, the, to, I used to have my car option. a bit messy, right? Yeah. And then one day I just made a decision. Boom. And yeah. I, I literally changed that. I, I used to do that. Exactly. Why does that annoy you, Trap? <laughs> um, it annoys me because it it worries me throughout the day. And then I'm I'm exerting energy on something that really doesn't matter in life. So I just want to change that habit. So then I'd never have to think about it again, and you, I can think about you know fulfilling my my ego. The the, the time you take to the the impressive thing there Why are you is sitting that like two that? minutes that you have to brush your teeth. You are using positively, whereas some other people would even look at those two minutes and lose those two minutes. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's funny. The three things that you just said, Justin, with the how can I add to my skills, I just wrote them down to print out and put on my uh, yeah. my mirror. So that's why I grabbed your phone because I want to put that on because I thought that was great. Now I'll put that in the center for a while and then I'll move it to the side. And for some reason, some days, like some days they, they catch me, some days they don't, and then I just reflect on them. Yeah, as I go. Reflect. I've got three mirrors in the house, and they're all written with shit all over them. Yeah. <laughs> You're great, Conrad. You're great, Conrad. No, I didn't even know Travis did that. Yeah. No, no, I am no. a lion. Hear me roar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, to any listeners that have still uh, have stuck this one out, um, yeah, yeah. good on you. <laughs> Thank you. We very much appreciate your... What's the uh, joke? You're almost. Well, yeah, you're, no, not, think... you're nearly ninety minutes into this one. Oh, really? <laughs> Jesus. Not quite. Not quite. We'll go 82. Yeah, well, I still want to hear the joke. joke yet, Trev. No, that was no joke. That was, that was, that was, yeah, it was nothing. It was just giggles. I think it was the one I said, the wheel, the wheel yeah, clamp on your yeah. microphone, I think. But like, you actually say it a lot better. So we've got to build a positive habit of bringing a joke every week. <laughs> I won't judge you. I'll be positive. Why, why did the positive. orange stop rolling down the road? <laughs> Didn't want to get... I don't know. Trust Orang- a trust Oranga to bring her orange joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a joke within a joke. It ran out of juice. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs> and on that note, please share the Simple Minds <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Tell all your friends. Tell all your friends. And Maybe hold this podcast. <laughs> and hold, hold out until you've held out to the end and tell your friends to hold out until the end for that quality joke. <laughs> um, on that, that's a wrap. It's been a great episode. Thanks for listening. Appreciate your time. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and share us around. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.